everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video. Today we're going to get into brown hair. Uh, something I used to have so I know a little bit about. Let's get into it. Uh, the strict technomancer that is Vincey V. Let us get to the technique and learn it Vincey V style. Brown hair is one of the more common hair colors in the world uh, and so it only makes sense that we should finally get into it. One of the reasons I haven't deep dove it for a long time is because I think it's honestly sometimes fairly obvious, or at least I think that was my perception. But as I've talked to people and come to evolve the way I think about painting over time, I've come to see how much nuance there is in painting brown hair, all of the different various tones and hues and values and shades we can use. And as a result, uh, I wanted to do a new video really taking you through brown hair, uh, we're going to paint it on this model, and I'm going to show you kind of how to create the light, how to do interesting things, and how you can play with the tones to create everything you might want from very light sandy brown hair to something very dark. Uh, even though it might have been almost 20 years since I had any brown hair up there, I can still look at those old pictures of mine as a good reference for what we're supposed to do. So, let's head over to the desk, and let's get into it. All right, let's start with the paints. Everything we do here is going to be these five paints. There's nothing magic about these five. You could use anything, but generally you want something in a nice brown tone. This is going to be your mid-tone. You want to be able to go a little bit down and a lot up. And I'm going to start uh, by actually laying down just a nice base coat um, of something that's going to be darker than my mid-tone. Well, here's what I mean by that. Imagine you have a sort of color spectrum from one to five, one being the brightest, five being the darkest. We're actually going to start with the hair in the four. We're going to build up that halo effect. And you'll see how we build back in saturation and things like that later. So once I've got the base coat, I then block in some rough shadows. Here I'm working very thin. I want it to flow down into the recesses, and I'm not washing it everywhere. This is the first mistake I see people make. When they, when they shade their, their hair, they put the dark shadow everywhere. It doesn't go everywhere. The upper parts of the hair do not have the darkest shadow in them. Only the parts that are in sort of the shadow areas go down into this dark color. Now this is going to be my actual like realistically brown hair mid-tone with some light. And so this is my mahogany. And we're going to focus here on two things. One, establishing the actual halo of light. So that is the big broad section that you saw me place across the crown of the head. And then two, extending that down into the appropriate areas. So notice that I first applied it and I made sure in those in the area where it's gonna be the primary color, I covered everything, including the recesses. But then I stretch out from it and don't cover everything. It's the same with this. Even though I'm doing these lines, as I continue to add lighter color, uh, the uh, when I, my first pass is going to cover everything in the area, including the recesses. Then I start working out from there, doing these longer lines that stretch and extend their way down into the other color. So every color is extending out of its sort of spectrum down into the other colors. Um, every time the primary light, the primary band of light that I'm creating here, operates completely within the one above it. And when I get up to this highlight, you'll, know he, you'll notice here I'm not going quite as deep in the resource, recesses. The shadow color for my highlight areas is effectively a slightly brighter version of my midtone. But nothing, even in the recesses at the highlight, goes darker than something slightly above my mid-tone. And nothing in the shadow area goes brighter as a highlight than the mid-tone. I cannot stress this enough. As you're working the halo, as you're sort of shaping and building the, the light that's going to be on the hair, in this whole upper area where the light is, is actually showing, you don't have any of your deepest shadow. It does not exist. Only the mid-tone exists. And then when we get down to these very bright highlights where I'm really trying to establish that light line, remember, hair is satin. That means it's highly reflective. So to establish that highlight, we have to come in and do the same thing here up to very, very bright tones. 
This should be a very small volume, i.e. not a lot of space is taken up on the miniature. But it should run very bright. There's nothing brown about these last couple colors I'm painting, but that's appropriate. That's the light. A bunch of the hair is still brown, so it will still read as brown. Just because it says brown hair doesn't mean you have to use paints that only say brown on the bottle. And as I get to these very highest highlights, what I'm doing is just now we're only doing the sort of staccato lines. Only in these very central, small, teeny tiny areas, the very precise middle of the halo, right? My last and final brightest highlight, you notice how sometimes I'm just literally stippling it. It's a dot. It's nothing more than a dot. Sometimes it's a line that streaks, but mostly it's just a dot. Now this has all just been layering, but I am getting progressively thinner as I go, and that journey will continue with our next steps. Remember, the tones I'm working with here are not somehow sacred. This to me is sort of a good neutral brown. It'll run you and, and serve you well, you know, run through your colors and serve you well. But it's not the only thing you can use. Any series of brown paints, you could shift more into red if you want it to feel a little warmer, a little more strawberry, a little closer to red hair. Uh, you can shift it more into ochres if you want it to be much more sandy uh, brown hair. You can shift more into deep purples or, or blue blacks if you want it to be much darker hair. It's really just about controlling those individual volumes. You want that nice, tight, light halo to be created regardless of how dark or light it is. The rest is just setting the individual hues that you think are credible for your miniature or for what you picture it to be at least. Any of those color ranges will work, and in fact, most of them can be combined in really interesting ways. As I mentioned, we are working progressively thinner. So when I started with the base coat, I was completely normal layer consistency. And I was mostly using layers, but they got to be thinner and thinner layers as I worked my way up the, the light spectrum. And I did that so I could build it up over multiple passes slowly instantiating that light and as I draw that thin translucent paint down over the other areas it wouldn't be as intense and bright but instead a lot of the undertone would show and so we get that natural blend and overlap. Here I'm actually building in the light on the, her shoulder which is like a sticky outy bit I missed earlier. But now what I'm going to do is mostly glaze either the mahogany or the warm brown some of both, sometimes a mix. Sometimes I bring in a little of the flesh and glaze it. This is very much a back and forth process. But I'm going to seek to smooth to some degree the transition between those layers, hide those individual brush strokes and transitions and make them look like a more natural transition of the light from one to the other. You'll also occasionally see me take some of that glaze and run like I am here all the way down into the shadow. This doesn't have much effect but again, I don't want all of the hair to fall into black in the shadow. In much the same way in the light, we have some of the midtone still represented in the recesses. In the shadow, we need some of the midtone represented in the highlights. This is a little important step. Um, some figures have this sort of hair where it extends out like this on the side of the face. You have to treat this in the same way and kind of over highlight this, especially if it's facing your light. Because that hair, in this case, the, the sh that hair is facing toward the light. And so it would actually be quite translucent and quite reflective and showing a lot of light. So I have to really make sure I get some good highlights on there and then perform all the same steps you saw me doing otherwise to smooth it out. Most of this then is refinement from this point. Do I have enough of this other color wherever there's a part sticking out or a natural fold to the hair? Remember, the highlight is specular, so that's the halo, but then we also want to get the sticky outy bits where there would naturally be light catching. And it's really just working back and forth. And you'll see how I sometimes push a little of that glaze high up into the, into almost into the highlight area, not into the very center, but up higher. And I do that because I want a little bit of that midtone represented in the deeper recesses of the highlight. It's really a sort of balancing act. I wish I could say that doing hair, any color hair, 
was just a matter of applying a straight set of layers, but it's not. The final step I'm doing with the airbrush, but you could just do this more with glazes, and that's instantiating saturation. This can be where you tint the hair a certain color. So here I'm turning it just a tad more into the red tone. But through this, like a thin glaze, either through brush or airbrush, you can bring back the saturation, that life, that intensity, and even shift the color just a little. And with that, that hair's done. There you go, the brown hair is all done. As I said, you could continue to filter this and run it out any way you want, including by toning it through additional, like uh, contrast paints run through as a thin filter with the airbrush or very thin with a glaze or a brush as well. So if you liked this, hey, give it a like. Subscribe for additional hobby cheating in the future. We have new videos here every Saturday. If you want to support the channel, there's lots of ways you can do so. Hit that share button or tell somebody about the channel. It's free and it really helps. There's a merch store down there. And of course, there's a Patreon. Patreon is where you can go. It's focused on review and feedback and taking your next step on your hobby journey. As always, though, I appreciate so much you watching this one. And we'll see you next time.